Hi everyone, in this video we are going to see why India did not join the world's largest trading block RCEP. RCEP stands for Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. So what is RCEP basically? It is a 16 member trading block when I say 16, it was including India, but it was basically between 10 ASEAN countries and 6 FTA partners. That was how it was envisioned. And it accounts for about 30% of the world's population and 30% of the world's trade. So if it is so important, why did not India join this trading block? That is what we are going to see today. By 2030, this RCAP grouping might turn into a $126 billion trading block. But India has its own reservations about joining this kind of a FTA, that is a free trade agreement. So what is FTA? So FTA refers to agreements through which countries or regional blocks they create something called a preferential trade relationship with one another or with the group members at large. So what is meant by preferential trade? Meaning they are either given relaxations in the duty structure or there will be sectors where the country's economy will be opened up to other country members, to other countries. So this is how preferential trade is happening. That is, it will be favoring the members of the block or a grouping over the other individual countries around the world. So this is what a preferential trade agreement is and that is what is FTA. So what countries gain or how they are benefited through FTA? So when FTAs are there, there will not be trade barriers between countries. Let's take ASEAN as a grouping. ASEAN stands for Association for the Southeast Asian Nations, right? So there are 10 members in it. So when ASEAN is a regional block that is standing together and having a FTA or um, a, if they are integrated in terms of a customs union, what will happen? There is lesser tariff. Okay, uh, if a country, if a company from some other country wants to invest in one of the countries in ASEAN, then their trade in Southeast Asia could be expanded so easily because across the borders, movement of the goods and services will not cost that much because they have a preferential trade agreement. The custom duties or any tariffs are going to be really easy to handle, the taxation and things like that. And therefore, any regional block is preferred for investment by other companies around the world. So that is one advantage. And number two will be supply chain integration. So through supply chain integration, almost all the countries in the grouping will attain a similar amount of development. Wherever they are lagging, the other country would compensate. Right, and where they flourish, they will contribute towards the growth of the other country. So together, when they form a regional block, it's better for them to grow well, okay? And this would in turn result in an accelerated growth. And that is why we, say, we see a good amount of, you know, um, growth that could happen through RCEP. So now, talking about the advantages of an FTA, why is India so skeptical about joining RCEP? That is a question that needs to be answered. So point number one, it's going to be the China angle. So China and India, we already have an increasing trade deficit, okay, that's growing year by year. So if India joins this RCEP and reduces the, um, tariff barriers. So what could possibly happen is Indian markets could be flooded with the Chinese goods. Okay, so that is the reason India is skeptical about joining it. And China already has a number of FTA agreements with all the ASEAN members, if not all, almost every country. 
So this makes the FTA agreements in this region like a spaghetti bowl. Okay, it is said to be a spaghetti bowl effect, meaning every country has an FTA with every other country. So now if they want to declutter everything and create one single FTA, it's going to be really challenging. And China is almost um, a welcome country to all the uh, Southeast Asian neighbors. So though some of them have some territorial negotiations in the Southeast, South China Sea taking place with China, however, most of them in terms of economy are good friends with China. So how is it going to play out with India as uh, a part of RCEP was one point where India had a lot of reservations about. And number two is lack of reciprocity. What do we mean by lack of reciprocity? It means, I could explain it with an example. So India, when it has an FTA with uh, ASEAN as a grouping, 74% of India's economy is open for ASEAN countries. However, some countries inside ASEAN and the richer among those, like Indonesia, have only 50% of openness towards India. So which means when we give a lot, we don't get back a lot. And this also created uh, problems during the negotiations because India has a comparatively uh, good service sector advantage. Okay, we are good in service sector and we wanted those countries to open up their service sector for us. But however, those countries were um, reluctant to do that and um, those countries had asked for uh, advantage or reducing the tariff barriers and things like that in industrial area. So the Southeast Asian nations have uh, cheap labor and labor intensive industries. So if we open up our uh, economy for the industrial area, our MSMEs, uh, which are already uh, finding it troublesome to compete with the world and the global goods, uh, that could become you know a backfiring for india and that is why we uh, kind of uh, saw that as a lack of reciprocity and there is no level playing ground in that particular area and that is uh, one more angle which is the current domestic scenario in india by current domestic scenario we mean uh, the trade protectionism that is a, a part of the uh, reviving growth during this pandemic situation. We have uh, talked about Atmanirbhar Bharat through which we are trying to achieve self-sufficiency. So this is a point where India is looking inwards and it, is, it wants to accelerate growth within and then look for the outside world. So this is one area while we talk about the domestic scenario, which is economical. The other area is already we have border tensions with China. So now joining a grouping where um, China is, if not straight, indirectly the lead of the grouping would prove troublesome for India. So this is one among the concerns. And the next concern are certain technicalities within RCEP. So the rules and exceptions so far are not so clear. So India is kind of hesitant because uh, after we join, it might turn to you know the advantage of China. So that is one point. And one more thing is India demanded for an investor state dispute resolution mechanism, which the RCEP countries uh, which were in negotiation did not kind of agree with. So these are the hesitations and uh, looking at, you know, our own scenario and uh, the global turbulence and uh, changing in economic situation uh, post pandemic. So looking at all these factors, India has uh, decided to stay away from the RCEP and um, India feels that it is an exception filled RCEP that is going to favor China in a way. However, what's going to happen with this largest trading group, it has to be weighted and watched because we already have something called the CPTPP. Uh, CPTPP stands for uh, Comprehensive and Progressive Trans-Pacific Partnership. 
already uh, it was negotiated during the era of obama through which he wanted to bring a trans pacific partnership with the asean countries and other surrounding Asi asian countries however that did not work during the trump era and usa kind of uh, remained out of the grouping uh, through the biden um, mr president elect mr biden coming into the uh, Uh, presidential post we are yet to watch how these groupings and multilateralism and regionalism are going to take shape in the future and how the us china dynamics is going to work so for now uh, it seems like it is all in place for india we really have a question about would india join any other ftas in the reason uh, in the near future Uh, that's a question and we need to wait and watch thank you friends for watching us